I wanted to talk just a little bit about equanimity tonight, but that, then I'd like to open it up to more of a discussion. Um, equanimity is that quality that's, uh, that's one of the last that we get all together because it's, it's a sense of being really balanced and accepting and uh, that's hard to do. So we have to be we have to be equanimous with ourselves, which is very hard to do. And then we just can gradu we have to do that first. And then we can begin uh, being equanimous towards things going on in the world, things going on with the people we love, you know, with situations. And um, it's, it's always at the end of the, the list, like one of the last things that we get to before we, we're, we're enlightened. So it's a very, it's, it's, there's a reason that we struggle with it, and there's a reason it's because it's, we have to have all the other things set up in our lives to give us the, uh, the ability to have equanimity. So one of the things there, there, I ran across some good uh, things you can do in the moment in your daily life that can just give you a little practice in equanimity. And uh, one of those is to just uh, different times during the day when you're working or when you're, you know, when you just think about it, you can just be aware of your own reaction to things going on, maybe at a, at a meeting or if you're uh, just driving, or you could, be, you could be at work or be at home or talking to someone. And just be aware of your own, of your own uh, reactions going on to whatever's happening, to a conversation, to whatever's coming up at work. And just notice, take a minute or two to just notice if your reactions are pleasant or unpleasant. And, and part of the challenge of the exercise is to allow yourself to feel the unpleasantness, if it's unpleasant, like to not mask over it and try to and not, not repress it because you, you want to not be negative or you want to not be feeling anything unpleasant, but to just allow yourself to feel either the, the pleasantness of the interaction or your your thoughts at the moment or you know your response just be aware of whether it's pleasant or an unpleasant uh, response you're having and then just allow yourself to be able to accept your own response don't try to change it to another response because it seems inappropriate or uh, not how you want to be. And then just begin to see if you can become more accepting to the situation, whatever that is. So say you're having, I just had a conversation with my mom before, before I, I uh, had to get dressed and get here. And it's because my mother's really old, a lot of times we go through the same stories all the time. I'm sure you have people in your lives that, you love a lot, but you've heard the same thing like every single time you talk to them. And so I was trying to, I, and I've, I've gotten so much better over the years, but I mean, now she's getting older, so there's more of that repetition. So I up my game and she ups her game, and it's, we're, we, but I was thinking of that exercise too. I was thinking, um, Oh, this is like I could see where I could go from being equanimous with it to where I could start feeling the un, un, unpleasant my, that my response to it was becoming unpleasant, and then I had a but I but just watching myself feel that I could it gave me a little wiggle room to start dealing with my response, and so I knew when it was maybe time to change the subject or. Uh, you know, talk about something else was usually the best thing to do instead of just going over the same thing over and over again. But uh, 
also part of it that part of what I needed to do was just be aware of when when I go from pleasant to unpleasant in terms of my response. And then a lot of times all I have to do is just just be okay with that. Like it's not always going to be pleasant, but this is a person I love, and uh, this this is where she is, and so I can handle it. I'm, it doesn't have. To, I don't have to stay with that unpleasant response. I can let it kind of mellow out, and I can stay with it, you know, a little bit longer, because we don't talk that long on the phone. So, so then I can just. Uh, then part of the exercise is then get to that point where you can say, things are as they are. This is how things are. And so there's no need to feel, we don't have to always be uh, entertained by everything. Like everything doesn't have to be pleasant. And the unpleasant doesn't have to stay unpleasant. We can just become okay with it the way it is. And, I, I was thinking today when I was talking to her, I've come such a long way in being in a more loving relationship with her, but I can still feel that unpleasantness come up. So it's always, it's still more, as I was driving here, I was thinking, it's still such a blessing to have, to have so much. I, I almost feel like my, you know, I was thinking, I guess my mom stuck around this long just to give me this wonderful opportunity to develop equanimity. It's and and I I could really feel it like wow that's um, that's amazing isn't it isn't that great that she's doing that for me and so I think if we can take that that just happened that wasn't I didn't plan for that to happen I was before I called her I'd been reading and thinking about equanimity and I'm working on developing it but then the call just came and I could see in the middle of the call what a great opportunity it was but that um, little exercise of just stopping or being aware at some point during our day do I how what am I feeling based on stuff coming at me pleasant or unpleasant and can I be okay with whichever one it is? And then maybe see if it's unpleasant, see if I can just recognize it's unpleasant. Don't be repressing those unpleasant feelings, but just can I work with it to make it just come to the middle? Can I work on it to be okay with it? And just accept it the way that's how it is. Like even with a person we love, Sometimes it's not all. It's not always pleasant. You know, we'd be bored to death if it was, right? We have, we have, we have conflict. We have unpleasantness. We have misunderstandings. And uh, can we just work on being more accepting of all that? And it's a good feeling in those seconds. You know, <laughs> the, the seconds that I can do that. But uh, think about it in your daily life. Think about, oh, here's an opportunity. Let me see. What, what am I feeling right now? Because we're always either feeling pleasant or unpleasant or sometimes neutral. Uh, sometimes neutral is a great thing to feel, but sometimes neutral means we're not paying close enough attention to what we're taking in. So try that and see if you can first be... Uh, have, feel okay about how you feel and then see if you can change it a little bit and, to, and see how that then see how that feels to be able to work with it so uh, I, I thought some of you may have your own experiences working with equanimity that if you could share The, and I'll tell you first, the reason I'm work, trying to work with it, I'm working, I'm trying to work with the four, the Brahma Vihadas, the four qualities, the supreme qualities, uh, loving kindness, compassion, and uh, sympathetic joy, joy for others, and uh, equanimity is the fourth one. 
See, it's even last in that list. So it takes all the other, you have to build, the others have to all be there for equanimity to come. But those four qualities are what I'm trying to uh, work with in my practice. And I was, I asked Bhante Bhadia in Sutta study yesterday, like, I know how to do loving kindness meditation, but is there a special meditation for compassion and uh, uh, sympathetic joy and for equanimity? And his answer was so wonderful because it, it started seeming easy. And I've seen, you know, you can find specific meditations for those other qualities, but he said, you know, if you do loving kindness, then, you, then you're doing all the others too. If you go through, start with yourself and work out to your loved ones and then to strangers and then to difficult people and then to all beings, as you work out, you're, you're hitting compassion because you're, you're wishing for others the same things you wish for yourself. And you're working with sympathetic joy because you're wishing that all, all beings are... Uh, peaceful and happy and content and full of well-being. And so that's sympathetic joy. And then equanimity is being, you know, we have these blessings, but we're, we're, being, uh, we're being okay with everything as it is. We don't have to say, we never say, I'm, I want to send loving kindness to my friends but not my enemies. I want to send it to good people and not to bad people. You know, we're sending it, we're being completely uh, balanced. We're sending those same blessings we want for ourselves to all beings. We're not looking at who our allies are and who they, who they aren't. You know, we're not distinguishing. So everything's going out, it's balanced. We want for everyone else the same things we want for ourselves. And so it was like, it was like a simple... Uh, that was my favorite uh, answer about that. And then there are certain, there are, there are special meditations you could do, maybe if you want to focus in on one of the qualities. And I know if you have uh, Noah Levine's book, Up for Refuge Recovery, he even has specific meditations on compassion and uh, equanimity and sympathetic joy. But they're they're done the same way we do loving kindness. So you can you just begin with yourself and you let it radiate out. So that's how I've gotten interested in this. Mm -hmm. One of the tricks in this world is to be a diner and not a dinner. And actually, we are trying to just maintain a balanced life. If in the world we see that there's a lot of which we can't really understand sadness and such, it's because it's being balanced by, in in turn, more acceptance of yoga and Buddhism in the world. So there's a balance that the world is maintaining. Even this room is in balance. When you take your posture for meditation, you are seeking a balance of the forces. So it's the balanced life and to be a diner, not a dinner. <laughs> Well, and it's true, we often don't see like the long-term view or we, our view is too, you know, we're, we're not, we can't see things from a, a different perspective. And that's part of what we're trying to learn how to do is to be able to see things from different perspectives, like the gym with a lot of facets, we're trying to see things from uh, different viewpoints. And... Yeah, so that's that's good. Thank you for that point. We're, and that's finding balance and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm an outlier or something, but I, it's hard for me to stay present and I'm looking forward to maintain that balance, but become so obsessed with getting to a goal, whether it be you know, fitness and financial or something, that you're that, oh, if I just uh-huh the chase of being balanced is actually annoying enough yeah because you're chasing it because you're you have an attachment to that goal so you you have to learn how to let go of your attachment to it i mean the goals are fine to have but we get too attached to the to the end goal 
and that 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 finding equanimity would be is really good because then you can feel like if today you've done what you need to do towards that goal then that's then that's good that's balance but you're not too focused on uh when you reach that goal, because like all of us, usually when we reach those goals, everything isn't perfect. Well, you reach the goal and there's another one. There's another one. Never yeah, it never ends. So if you if you stay too caught up with those goals, too attached to them, then and their expectations and those goals you're holding on to, then then we then that's going to always create suffering. So just just be aware that you tend to do that, and try to uh, be 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 more in the journey, you know, the process than the goal itself. But that's a good point. That keeps us from being equanimous, doesn't it? Does anybody else have a good uh, something they'd like to share about the goals? Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's really good. Thank you for sharing that. Because the, the first thing we have to do is accept it, right? And then you're loving to those parts, and then you can you, that's going to help them help you learn to work with that and get everything back connected again. Yeah, that's that's lovely. And that's that's that same exercise for equanimity is exactly that, isn't it? Whatever's coming up, we accept it, and and then and and have to be loving towards it because that's what there is at that moment. Yeah, thank you. And that can kind of apply to yours too. Like what's what hap- Your goal is out there somewhere, but where you are is right here, where everything is the way it is. And and be 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 focused on that. Don't get lost. It's hard to make. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. Does and that's what. Uh huh. I think sometimes in the same in the present moment too, you find that you reach a goal, but maybe it's not the one that you thought that you were striving for. But it's something that you hadn't even really considered when you were making the other goal. Right. Yeah, so that's, and you don't want to be so, if you're too focused on the the number one goal, you may miss the goals along the way that might even be more important. And when it doesn't have an objection or a plan or uh, you get satisfaction or whatever you reach. Yeah, exactly. And the more that that happens, the less disappointment there is. Right. So, yeah, the, the goal, it's good to set goals, but we can't, we have to be ready to let go of them at any point. Which is, I mean, that's what we're, we always have to be juggling with that. Because <laughs> if your goal is a certain career, you, 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 you know, I've seen, I've had friends who have gotten law degrees and then discovered as soon as they they went through all that education they hated being a lawyer then it's like well now we got to go back and become a psychiatrist you know it's, so i've seen so many people and i mean i've got a, one a master's degree that i've never used so uh, we we set we set goals but we sometimes don't know who we're going to be when we reach that goal so we have to keep we've got to keep in touch with ourself on the way to the goal. Yeah. I think sometimes we miss the lessons if we're not looking in front of us. We have to look all around, otherwise we miss the valuable lessons that come. 
Yeah. Right. And the ones and that. Accepting ourselves and loving ourselves, we missed the lessons, or looking too far ahead for the goal. Uh huh. We missed the lessons, which which is where we find balance when we go. This is why I'm feeling this way, or not feeling this way, or right. Or whatever it may be. It's right. what's it's what's That's kind of right in front of our face what at the moment. Up. Yeah. We need to learn. If we're looking everywhere else, we don't. Yeah, we we can't see it because we're, we're blinded if we're looking too far far ahead. Uh huh. I think the world, for some, is the teacher. I think it is for you're, all of us. <laughs> Your thoughts and actions attract to yourself what you need next to progress in self-realization. Well, we know the Buddha always said everything we need to learn is in this body. And this body is what we travel through this world in. And we can find the answers are, are within us. I mean, we're, we're just trying to discover what we, what's already what's already us, what's already here, that we've kind of covered over. So, yeah, we need to stay in touch with what's right in front of us. Unpleasant or unpleasant, right? <laughs> Acknowledge it, do it. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's always kind of a learning to cradle whatever it is to that image of kind of rocking with it and sort of uh, soothing it just like it's a baby or something that's gotten fussy thanks very much for sharing with us about the uh, with the trauma that disassociation and how you have to be because we're you know we all have forms of that right so we have to accept ourselves the way we are right now. So you, you need to accept yourself for being really goal-oriented. That's not a bad thing. You know, that's a good thing. But, uh, but then you have to work with it to make it be, be, uh, to be more skillful with it, to, to be more gentle with yourself and not lose what's happening every day. Um, but we all, we all, we all have to meet ourselves every morning when we wake up. You know where we are, and just accept. And the more we can accept it in ourselves, the more we can accept it in the rest of the world. I used to hate that expression. It is what it is. You know, th- th- people don't say that as much now. They used to just say it at the end of every paragraph. But it's actually that's that's what we are trying to look at. That things are things are the way they are. This is that's one of the lessons this world is here to teach us. That's why we come to this world is to okay, the world is this way, and we often don't want it to be the way it is. And we're trying to learn to work with that, that we're not seeing reality clearly, that we're not working with what's already there. So we it can be fun, it can be good. We always have to choose how we see it also and how we react to it. That's right. And it's not that we can necessarily change it what they are, what that but we can change with from within. And that's always what we're that's always what we little exercises that we can do during the day or ways to help us tune in to how we do that. Mm -hmm. Turn lemons into lemonade kind of thing. But first we have to recognize that they're lemons. (laughs) You know, we can't, it's not too, it's not, I don't think it's good to be like Pollyanna-ish, like not acknowledge that there are these things. It's better if we see it. This is how it is. Now let me see how I can work with it, but only after I recognize what it is. Yeah. Uh huh. I think sometimes too recognizing those feelings for me is helpful because that helps me kind of realize that they're just feelings. You know, they're not part of. Yes. So like if I'm feeling sad, sometimes I feel like, um, I just feel it. You know, like if I'm a sad person, but when I recognize it, I kind of realize this isn't me. It's just a feeling that I'm having. Yes. And that's really important. And that's why in our meditation we always think about just let those thought, that stuff that comes up in our, our thoughts that come up, just let them flow through. 
Because a lot of times that's what's coming up. Like, oh, I'm mad at myself because I didn't get something done today at work. Or, uh, you know, there are feelings about kind of beating on ourselves. Or, and we don't have to, we can see that those thoughts and those feelings are not who we are. They're just things coming up, coming up and passing away. Yeah, thank you. That's very important. Okay, thank you, everybody.